You probably already know that in the original Animal Crossing E+, Plus that was released in Japan only, you could wake up Tom Nook in the middle of the night to open up his store. Or in Animal Crossing New Leaf, you could actually go into Mr. Rossetti's secret surveillance center. But what if we took things a step further and we tried to find some of the most deep and obscure facts and details about Animal Crossing that even the most experienced and knowledgeable Animal Crossing player probably doesn't know about? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today, and I'm pretty sure that even the most knowledgeable Animal Crossing fan will be surprised by at least one or two of the unique details on this list. So let's go ahead and jump into it. It's crazy to think that Mario Kart 8 originally released all the way back in 2014, and later on they would add an Animal Crossing themed racetrack. On this racetrack you can see a ton of Animal Crossing references, villagers, and whatnot, but if you actually find Mr. Rossetti on this track and get your cart up close and then listen very carefully, you can just ever so subtly hear the theme of Mr. Rossetti's music that normally happens when he appears in your game playing in the background. Over the years of Animal Crossing's existence, Nintendo has had to iterate multiple times that Tom Nook isn't the bad guy in this franchise. However, that didn't stop the official Animal Crossing strategy guide for the GameCube version of the game to make a joke about Tom Nook breaking your thumbs if you don't pay back your bells. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you utilize the handheld mode in your mobile phone's camera app, you can actually see angles of different things that you normally don't see when you're playing through the game normally. And one thing that's really interesting is if you look closely at the computer screens of multiple Animal Crossing characters, you'll find that on the screen, in most instances, there's actually a dock at the lower middle section of the display. This likely means that all Animal Crossing villagers are running a version of Mac OS, or at least the Animal Crossing universe version of Mac OS, which is kind of interesting. And none of these computers actually look like Mac computers, so maybe they're running on Mac minis? I don't know, it's a really obscure detail, but the dock there is kind of interesting. Also in New Horizons, the vending machines for drinks are different based on what colors you have for your specific island. And while you can now customize them over at Harv's Island, it is interesting that the sodas will change based on what color your vending machine is. More specifically, if you have a pink vending machine, your vending machine will be stocked full with this interesting soda that has a heart logo on it, which none of the other vending machines seem to have. Harv is an interesting character. He was introduced in a special update to Animal Crossing New Leaf, though most people know him from Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now what's really interesting though is his name is Harv, but it's actually short for Harvey. And this dog villager was introduced alongside the big Welcome Amiibo update in New Leaf where they added a trailer park where a bunch of villagers and characters could come in their RVs. And his name's Harvey. Harvey and RV rhyme. That that's the fact. I can't believe I didn't know this until recently. Brewster's really interesting in Animal Crossing New Horizons. The Roost is back again, and not only does he have a bunch of gyroids and other little interesting details behind his counter, but at the top of every hour, this cuckoo clock will go off, and it's kind of neat. In the 3DS release game Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, there's actually a furniture item that is a board game version of Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, which is kind of funny that this exists, and also it shows that that even the villagers in Animal Crossing didn't know how to properly play this game because it was confusing. It's supposed to be a video game, not a board game. Still, I think it's really an interesting callback to the game's self. While we have seen some instances of Animal Crossing villagers aging in one way or another, like for instance, Tortimer's acknowledged the passage of time and so has Rover. Over the years, if you've paid attention to the way that dialogue is presented through the character Cap'n, you'll actually see this character has been aging and changing over the decades that Animal Crossing has existed. Existed. Whether he's driving a boat or driving a bus, his dialogue has shown that this character has aged over time. For instance, in the earlier Animal Crossing games, Cap'n often sings about his troubles in finding love. In Wild World, you might see him in the roost recalling his times at sea and is kind of a little bit bitter towards the world. City folk, he seems to be a little bit older this time around, talking about the youth in more of a past tense sense. But if the player is a female, he might occasionally throw a couple of little flirtatious remarks that way if he can. I mean, he is a bus driver and is super manly and attractive, right? I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But he also mentions his family in this game, that he has a nephew, which is kind of interesting. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, we see the most dramatic change with this character though, as not only does he seem a lot older, we know he has a family, and we even get to see that he now has a wife and a daughter, and he talks about his family quite often 
often on your boat rides. And then we get to Animal Crossing New Horizons, where he appears once again. You can even see his family in the roost at times if you have the amiibo figures, but most specifically when you're going on the boat ride with him, this version of Cap'n is a much wiser and older version of the character, often reflecting on his life and giving advice to your character as you're riding along. Just some inspirational quotes. Sometimes his songs are about his wife or his daughter, or sometimes those older lovesick tales he used to sing about, but it is very interesting to see that there is a blatant and calculated change that this character has gone through, unlike many of the other characters from the series. In the dinosaur section of the museum in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you can actually see this exhibit here that I thought was a flower for a long time, but it's actually a meteorite, suggesting that in the Animal Crossing universe, it is strongly believed that all the dinosaurs went extinct due to a meteorite. But one thing that's really interesting is if you pull your phone back out into that mobile handheld mode and pan the camera around, you can actually see another meteorite hanging way above in the sky that you can't see otherwise if you're just running around freely. This one, more people probably know, but I still thought was really interesting, so I wanted to talk about it. If you complete more sections of your museum, you can actually see all of these different villager animal types lined up here and these lines connecting to the earlier ancestors in the evolution line, which is pretty cool in itself, but at the very end, there's a blank spot, which is what is assumed to be for a human villager to stand on, which kind of connects things together. For once, it feels like you being the only human in the Animal Crossing world is kind of just a normal thing alongside all the other animals. You're just an animal in a different way. I don't know what I'm saying again. Let's just keep moving. This one's kind of eerie, but in the original Animal Crossing games, if you upset a villager, like you talk to them too much, or maybe you hit them with a net too many times, you could actually upset a villager and their voice would slowly drop in pitch. But while this still kind of occurs in some of the newer games, their pitch would continue to drop lower and lower and lower until they're at like this next level, just eerie sounding depression, which always made me feel really bad if I ever did this back in the day. I think I only did it once and then never did it again because I felt bad genuinely as a kid. We'd mentioned the Mr. Rossetti's secret surveillance center already, but if you uh look closely at some of his belongings, one of the magazines here, I don't know, Rossetti might have some explaining to do. Turnip prices are interesting. If you look at like an Animal Crossing wiki page, it'll tell you that in the older Animal Crossing games, like the original game all the way through New Leaf on the 3DS, the absolute highest amount that you could sell turnips for is listed as 990 bells. This is what I believed for the longest time. Matter of fact, I thought in New Horizons, they even reduced the maximum amount to maybe the 700 and 800 range. But if you guys watch my 100 days in Animal Crossing GameCube video, which was actually one of my first Animal Crossing videos on this channel, which is crazy to think about. But in that video, I was absolutely shocked that Tom Nook purchased my turnips at 1,008 bells per turnip, which was a price I never knew was possible. And not only that, I don't think most of the Animal Crossing community knew that it was possible, at least prior to my video doing it. I mean, I'm sure someone else out there had a high turnip price too, but this is like not very documented and it was completely mind blowing at the time. I don't think this is the case for the other Animal Crossing games, though I do wonder what our documentation tells us for what a maximum turnip price is versus what it actually could be, because I obviously was like 19 bells higher than what we thought the max was. And of course the odds of getting that are crazy in itself. Okay, this next one is slight speculation, but there's enough documentation online for me to think that this one's real, so I might need some help from you guys if anyone out there wants to help me verify this. Now most of you probably already know this, but Gracie, Sahara, and Blanca are three Animal Crossing villagers that are female in the West English releases of the game, though they are male in the original Japanese versions of the game. However, Gracie's story gets a little bit deeper the closer you take a look at it. In the original Animal Crossing game, if you cleaned Gracie's car multiple times, it's reported, at least on various Animal Crossing fan sites, that Gracie reveals that her real name is actually Gretchen Grunch, or allegedly she denies the rumor claims that that's her real name. Unfortunately, I can't find any footage of this because documentation of these like rare events that happen in the old Animal Crossing games are pretty limited. Now, the interesting thing though is in Animal Crossing Wild World, City Folk, and New Leaf, there is multiple nods or allusions to villagers or other characters questioning if Gracie is in fact her real name. I'm like 99% positive that Gretchen Grunch is probably in the original GameCube version just because of the amount of documentation, but that 1% of me not having any footage to verify it bothers me immensely. So if 
anyone's playing through the GameCube version and happens to be able to test this out and get footage, send it to me on Twitter or something. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, have you ever zoomed into the snack vending machine to see what's in there? These also vary based on what color vending machine you have, but I found these cool purple chip cheese looking snacks and there's um, some mini cookies and some onion ring Funyuns type chips or something. Also, I found this really interesting for some reason, though I probably should have just recognized this in the first place, but all the vehicles in Animal Crossing New Horizons have the steering wheel on the right side instead of the left side like we have it here in North America. So it makes sense because the game was made in Japan, but for some reason I was surprised when I noticed this. Typically speaking, the television sets in Animal Crossing New Horizons will play the same shows kind of in sync, but if you have the special CRT television with a VCR built into it, the show will be different and man, does it look like a dramatic movie? It has some kids running in it or something. It might be really tragic, maybe. I don't know. In Animal Crossing New Horizons Happy Home Paradise, you can actually see Wardle has some interesting photos hidden behind him here in the shop, and it's pictures of him with his best friend that's a bird. It's kind of interesting. This bird trope actually pops up multiple times across this DLC. There's even this wooden bird over here. I don't know. Maybe he just likes birds. Maybe there's a deeper story here, but it's a little detail not a lot of people catch. Do you guys remember Wii Music? It was like shown off to be one of the most revolutionary Nintendo Wii games of all time, and people were so hyped to be able to experience this game. And then, you know, it came out and it was a thing. But there actually are some Animal Crossing songs featured in that game as well. Listen to this. <laughs> Okay, now I do feel like a lot of people know some of the tragic backstories behind the main Animal Crossing NPC cast, but I feel like not a lot of people know all of them, at least for these sets of characters. For instance, Tom Nook in Wild World has lamented the fact that he's a lonely bachelor and that a lot of people mistakenly think that Timmy and Tommy are his kids. He like goes into this like long monologue explaining this to the villager and it's just like one of those instances where you're at a grocery store and some person starts telling you way too much about their life and you're like, hey, that you're nice and all, but wow, you just unloaded a lot lot of information about your life to me. Timmy and Tommy's story is kind of tragic though. They were apparently just like found on the street and then Tom Nook found them and was like, hey, you guys can work for me now. Not really. He apparently raised them as his own and then, you know, trained them into being little entrepreneurs. It's not as dark as it sounds, but I like the darker theme. But yeah, obviously they're doing okay. The Abel sisters on the other hand had an incredibly tragic backstory. Apparently their parents died at a young age and Sable had to raise them and that's sad enough. And then Label ran off to become a fashion designer and change her name to LaBelle or something. I think that's actually caused Sable to have some abandonment issues and extra anxiety on top of everything else that she's had to deal with. Mabel apparently was too young to remember any of this stuff, so she also doesn't have any memory of her parents, which is kind of sad. It's kind of a tragic backstory. I think we don't know too much about Isabel and her brother Digby, but we do know for a fact that there was early memories of them being abandoned in a cardboard box or something like that, which is super sad if you think about it. We don't know why they were in the cardboard box. We assume that maybe they're abandoned by their parents, but we we do find from Animal Crossing New Horizons during the news thing at the beginning, Isabel will sometimes reference video chatting her parents, so we don't know the full story there. But whatever it was, there was times where they were tragically in a cardboard box and that's kind of like some homeward bound to lost in San Francisco vibes or something like that. And honestly, these are just a few of the really tragic backstories you hear about in the Animal Crossing franchise. If you're ever interested, really look into some of these characters and what stories they've had in previous games. It can get really interesting at times. Okay, this one some of you are going to know. Some of you are not going to know, but, and the ones that aren't going to know, it's gonna completely blow your mind, but apparently Gullivar, this guy, is not the same character as Gulliver. Yes, we have two similar sounding characters, One's more pirate themed, but nonetheless, both shipwrecked on the same island on a somewhat regular basis. Apparently the way we know this is that when you see Gulliver multiple times, he will recognize you like a second or third time. Gulliver though, once he appears, if you've already met Gulliver, does not recognize you, meaning that these characters are completely different. Lyle is probably one of my least favorite Animal Crossing characters because he straight up scams you in Wild World for a lot of bells. However, he's kind of an interesting character too, having many different roles over the years, whether he's scamming people for insurance or 
running the Happy Room Academy to other random jobs he's had. He's worked for Nook. In the 3DS game, Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, Lyle plays a little bit of a role on the second floor of Nook Homes as some senior designer. He was even in the little CGI commercial that they did. And what's really interesting is that Happy Home Paradise serves as kind of the sequel to Happy Home Designer, though this time around, Lyle doesn't appear really in this at all, other than little tiny cameos. One thing that is interesting is that if you look at the pictures on the wall inside of the main Paradise Planning building, you can see one image that is an obvious reference to Lyle here as he's in the picture, which in a way is kind of a cool nod. It's like a former employee person who worked around in a previous title, kind of just showing up in the background. I still don't trust him though. Not only is Lyle maybe a play on the word lie, which is what he does in Wild World, the first game he's in, his Japanese name is Hanma-san, which apparently is like truth or reality, but being used in like a really sarcastic manner. In Spanish, his name is Cise Huto, which derives from the verb Cisar, which is like to steal. And in Italian, his name is Frodolo, which is like derivative from the word fraud. I don't know, super sus, Lyle. Now, I also didn't realize this until I was doing research for this video, but he also is Lottie's uncle, which even makes this whole conspiracy even deeper. I guess it makes more sense why his picture is there. And hey, what can you do if your family member ends up being a criminal? You can't help it. You know, unless Lottie's secretly in on it. Speaking of criminals, one of the greatest things that actually came out of Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, despite all the criticisms that it got, was the trio of birds, Giovanni, Carlo, and Beppe. Okay, they're not ever explicitly referred to as criminals, but you can't help but to notice the fact that they have these, like, very Italian-sounding, maybe mafia-inspired names. They also are puns on vehicles, of course. But then their whole business is surrounding the idea of painting RVs, like giving them a completely fresh paint job. They got the family business going on here. I'm just saying if this was Grand Theft Auto and I needed to get my five-star wanted level down, I would go to these three to help me get a new paint job for my car. And on the topic of mobsters, we know for a fact, or at least we could consider the fact that Marlo, one of the newest villagers introduced in the Happy Home Paradise update that they did for 2.0 Animal Crossing, his official description automatically just puts the thought in your mind that he might be connected to the mob, literally. In Pocket Camp, when he was officially added into the game, they added an official biography about him that says, rumor has it that Marlo runs some sort of underground organization. No one knows for sure because everyone is too afraid to ask. This alone caused me to get this villager on my island because I needed him living and running some underground operation on my island. His house, given across some mob vibes here. But let's take it a step further. Not only is his little catchphrase word capiche, but his name might actually be a reference straight to the Godfather movie as Vito Corleone was originally portrayed by actor Marlon Brando. And here we have a villager named Marlo. That's such a cool homage. Earlier in this video, we talked a little bit about characters that have gone over some sort of growth over multiple games like Cap'n. There's another one that's often not talked about as much, but the character Phyllis, who was known for being incredibly rude in the earliest Animal Crossing games when she worked the night shift at the post office, has a much different tone in Animal Crossing New Leaf, which was the last game that she appeared in in her regular role. In New Leaf, it seemed like this character was more just overwhelmed in general, but not necessarily short and sarcastic like she was in the first two games. And matter of fact, if you can catch her in the roost in New Leaf, apparently she actually reveals a little bit about what was causing her stress in the previous games, talking about how she was more overworked when Tortimer was the mayor. Now this is interesting, of course, in those earlier games, the post office was kind of the central hub. They didn't have like a resident service or like a mayor's office type building. So everything was kind of directed to the post office. So it is interesting. And apparently Phyllis will even go as far as saying that she might not have been as cynical had she had the player be the mayor back then. That's kind of interesting to see this character that was super kind of hated for just being so rude, but in kind of a fun way, see some character growth. I actually miss the role of the post office in the older games in New Horizons. I felt like they still could have included it. They didn't need to kind of make the mail system just a part of the airport, but that's a whole topic for another video. I do think that I would love to have more buildings in Animal Crossing, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, then we've already talked about Dongwu Senlin in previous videos, but just a quick recap. Animal Crossing was released four times originally 
originally way back in the day when it first debuted. We had the N64 version called Animal Forest released only in Japan or Dobutsu no Mori. Then we have the localized version released in the West, which added some more features, which came out on the GameCube called Animal Crossing. And in Japan, they called this version Dobutsu no Mori Plus. Then there was like this ultimate version of the game that had even more features that released only in Japan after these other releases called Dobutsu no Mori E Plus. That was all the way in 2003. Typically, these are the four main Animal Crossing games that people talk about when we're talking about the first generation. But then again, there's a lesser known Animal Crossing game that came out three years later called Dongwu Senlin, which released only in China on the iQ. Now the iQ player only could play Nintendo 64 games that were ported over. So this version of the game is actually based all the way back on the original Nintendo 64 version of Dobutsu no Mori. Now, here's where the interesting fact that not a lot of people know is, while this version of the game did have some small differences added on to the Nintendo 64 version to have it updated for the new system. One of the biggest changes that these versions of the games have had multiple times over now is the writing interface built into the game. In the original N64 version, this is what it looked like when you were trying to type. Then they updated it for the GameCube controller in the three GameCube releases that were for Animal Crossing. But this special Chinese version, Dongwu Senlin, overhauled the keyboard system a third time, which is completely unlike anything that most players had seen, and it's interesting interesting considering the keyboard layout is more similar of course to the Nintendo 64 controller, which is what this 2006 console was used for. The same year, mind you, that the Wii came out. Also the carp was recolored to red in the Chinese version for some reason. Okay, so where did we end up landing with you guys? If you are a hardcore Animal Crossing fan, did you know all of these? If you're saying you did, I, I'm just saying now, I, you might, you might be lying. I feel like there's at least one in this video that you didn't know. But for the rest of you guys, hardcore fans or more casual fans, how many did you not know or how many did you know? Let us know in the comments down below. We're really curious because if we do future videos like this, maybe we got to up the ante, step things up a bit. Also, make sure you subscribe for more content like this. We're really trying to grow our channel, doing these deep dives into just the Animal Crossing lore and universe. Not too many people are covering stuff like this and we're trying to kind of do our own thing here. So a subscription does go a long way. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.